Nina, a woman, is in a supermarket to buy groceries. She feels embarrassed when she has to return some items because her money isn't enough. To make her day worse, a car splashes dirty water on her clothes as it runs into a puddle nearby. The driver, a man named Sergei, gets out to apologize and offers to pay for her cleaning. However, the angry Nina yells at him and leaves. Back at their apartment, Nina's husband Alexander reads a bank notice about their unpaid loan. He blames her for not reminding him and warns that they could lose their apartment if they fail to pay. Nina cries, and Alexander apologizes, promising to find a solution. Nina offers to help, but Alexander reminds her of their agreement. He is responsible for earning money, while her role is to provide for his needs as a man. He then undresses her and becomes intimate with her, though Nina remains worried about their financial situation. Meanwhile, Sergei is having breakfast with his family. Despite their wealth, they appear unhappy. Sergei's wife, Tamora, is angry with him for always being away and not spending time with the family. Tired of her complaints, Sergei leaves. Alexander, a professor, teaches Chinese at a university where Nina is one of his students. Nina's friend Laura remarks that Nina is lucky because her husband, Alexander, is smart and handsome. She inquires whether Alexander is good in bed, to which Nina responds that money is more important than pleasure. Laura comments that it will take her a long time to become rich, but the hopeful wife says her Prince Charming will come soon. Alexander has been invited to act as a translator between a Chinese businessman and a bank. However, due to a scheduling conflict, he asks his wife to substitute for him. The bank she will be working with is the same one from which they have a loan, and Alexander suggests that the chairperson might favor them if Nina helps seal the deal with the Chinese client. At the bank, Nina is introduced to the chairperson, who turns out to be Sergei, the man she yelled at earlier. Sergei expresses his displeasure with the substitution, but his assistant assures him that Nina comes highly recommended. Nina apologizes for her earlier behavior, but Sergei simply tells her to do her job properly. Sergei then takes their Chinese client to a casino as the client enjoys playing roulette. He gives Nina dollar two hundred in chips, but she admits she plays poorly. Sergei shares his story of how roulette changed his life. He was deeply in debt with loan sharks threatening him until one day he bet all his remaining money on number zero at the casino. By sheer luck, the ball landed on zero, saving him. Inspired, Nina places her two chips on number zero, and astonishingly, the ball lands on that number, winning her significant chips. Sergei warns Nina not to bet anymore, but she still puts all her winnings back on number zero. Sergei is right, and Nina loses all her chips. However, this makes their Chinese client happy because he won her profit. After the client leaves, Sergei invites Nina to go bowling. Nina insists that she does not know how to play, but Sergei patiently teaches her, and she feels elated when she hits the pins. Sergei's assistant advises him to invite Nina to dinner and then to a hotel, but Sergei doubts she will go with him. The assistant believes Nina likes Sergei and suggests he can win her over just like any other clients he has had. Following this advice, Sergei invites Nina to dinner at a fancy restaurant. They discuss the fantasies and realities of life until their conversation turns intimate. Nina tells Sergei about the loan they have from the bank, but he says he does not want to mix business with their interaction. He then invites Nina to his room, which offends her. Sergei apologizes, admitting he does not know how to seduce women, and says he likes her. He offers to help with their loan if she gives him what he wants. Nina refuses his help and leaves. She tells her husband Alexander about the meeting and how she won $7,000 from roulette but did not accept it. This makes Alexander furious, saying the money could have helped them a lot. Seeing how angry he is, Nina says she should have accepted the chairperson's offer to sleep with him. Sergei assumes Nina is being sarcastic and continues to rant about the money. Nina tells Laura about Sergei's offer to solve her problems, and her friend suggests he might be the Prince Charming she has been looking for. However, Nina insists she is married and committed to Alexander. Coincidentally, they see Alexander working his second job as a tour guide for Chinese tourists. Seeing how hard her husband is working, Nina feels guilty and really wants to help him. One day, Nina tells Alexander that the bank has already filed in court regarding their loan. Alexander says she could have done something about it when she was at the bank. Nina mentions she has the chairman's number, and Alexander urges her to call him. When Nina refuses, 
and Alexander insists, she gets angry and leaves. Nina thinks about Sergei's offer the entire day and finally calls him that evening, agreeing to meet the next day. The following day, Nina tells Alexander she will be at the library with her phone turned off. She then heads to the hotel to meet Sergei. The chairman immediately instructs his subordinate to hold off Alexander's loan for three months without interest and to lower his rates. During lunch, Nina remains hostile towards Sergei. The chairman reassures her that if she doesn't like him, she is free to leave and he won't hold it against her. Touched by his kindness, Nina finally agrees to be intimate with him. She becomes comfortable with him and after their intimate moment, she starts singing happily and shares a drink with Sergei. However, her mood suddenly changes as reality sets in and she has to go home. When she returns to the apartment, Alexander shares the good news about their loan, thinking it was due to his visit to the bank the day before. Nina seems unexcited about the news, and when Alexander tries to be intimate with her, she tells him she's tired. Meanwhile, when Sergei arrives home, Tamora notices he smells of a woman's perfume. The estranged husband denies it, which angers Tamora, leading her to call him names. Sergei calls Nina and asks to meet him at the same hotel the next day, but Nina declines and asks him to stop calling her. Nevertheless, the chairman says he will still wait for her. The next day, Laura calls and invites Nina for a girl's night out. Nina declines, but Alexander encourages her to go since it is nearby. Later that afternoon, on her way to the party, Nina suddenly changes her mind and rushes to the hotel where Sergei is waiting. Nina spends the entire night with her Prince Charming, and they agree to meet every Tuesday afternoon at the hotel. However, on the day they are supposed to meet again, Sergei's son falls ill. Unable to contact him because he is by his wife's side, Nina is left feeling sad. Even on her birthday, when her phone rings, Nina bolts from her seat, but it is not the call she was expecting, and her strange behavior worries her husband. One day, Nina goes to the bank, but her lover doesn't notice her. She has become obsessed with her prince Charming, but the fairy tale that had only just begun seems to be ending already. This realization plunges the hopeful princess into depression. Her worried husband, Alexander, takes her to see a doctor who prescribes her medication. Alexander takes good care of her, but as he starts to become intimate, Nina can no longer hold it in and finally confesses that she has slept with someone else. Alexander's care turns into anger and he demands to know who it was. Nina refuses to tell him and the furious husband calls her names and tells her to leave. With no place to go, Nina calls her Prince Charming in the middle of the night. Tamora, Sergei's wife, asks for an explanation. And when Sergei says nothing, she suspects it is his woman. Sergei meets Nina to ease her worries and promises to buy her an apartment to stay in. Sergei keeps his promise and buys an expensive apartment for his mistress. Laura is happy for her friend, believing her fairy tale and prince have come true. Meanwhile, Alexander is left at home, drunk, depressed, and getting into trouble. One day, Tamora cooks breakfast for her family, which Sergei appreciates, but their warm moment is interrupted by a call from Sergei's mistress, who is becoming increasingly obsessive. Instead of wanting to meet only on Tuesdays and Sundays, Nina now wants to see him every day. Sergei, who was initially only after pleasure, now sees his mistress as a new burden. Nina keeps visiting the office, but the chairman has been avoiding her. One day, she finally manages to get hold of him and invites her Prince Charming to go with her to the theater. Sergei declines, promising to see her the next day. However, days pass, and Sergei never shows up. One evening, someone rings the doorbell, and the excited princess opens the door only to find her estranged husband, Alexander, outside. Alexander still hasn't moved on and assaults her, claiming that she is still his woman. In distress, Nina calls her lover in the middle of the night and tells him what happened. Sergei says he will deal with Alexander, but Nina tells him to forget it because there is something more important. She is pregnant, and Sergei is the father. Sergei says he will support the child financially. Although Nina wants more, she understands she cannot compel him to offer anything beyond financial support. When Sergei arrives home, his drunk wife, Tamora, asks what happened. Sergei confesses that his mistress is pregnant, he assures her that nothing will change, but Tamora has had enough. She kisses Sergei and bids him farewell. Meanwhile, 
Alexander is in the park when two goons suddenly beat him up. They were hired by Sergei to deal with him. Days later, Sergei starts the construction of a travel agency he bought for Nina. Lara, now in a relationship with her best friend's ex-husband, tells Alex about their new relationship and informs him that Nina is pregnant with a rich man's child. Though Lara feels sorry for revealing this, Alexander assures her that he is all right. However, deep down, the tormented man feels rage. One day, he brings a knife with the intention of stabbing the man who stole his princess. A bodyguard is about to shoot him, but Nina manages to intervene, knowing he wouldn't hurt her. Nina calms Alex down and convinces him to drop the knife and leave. Years pass, and Sergei is now living with his new family. But his relationship with his wife has become as casual as his previous one, and the same goes for his relationship with Nina. One day, Alexander, now a doctorate holder and successful professor, is invited to a party where he sees his ex-wife and her current husband, Sergei. Nina talks with him, and Sergei is completely unbothered by it. Later, Sergei receives a call and tells his wife that he has to leave for something important. After he leaves, Alexander confesses that he still loves his ex-wife. Nina casually suggests they leave and get a room. In a twist of fate, Sergei, who used to secretly see Nina, is now going home late to spend time with his first family, while Alexander, Nina's ex-husband, has become her new lover. She makes it clear to her ex-husband that their affair will remain casual as she has turned into a cold-blooded woman. However, as she heads home, tears begin to fall from her eyes as Nina realizes that this is not the happily ever after she had dreamed of. We hope you enjoyed this recap as much as we did. Remember to subscribe to Classic Recaps Universal for more insightful dives into timeless masterpieces. If you found the narration is good in this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your fellow movie enthusiasts, and drop your thoughts in the comments below.